it's really nice for me now to know that there's a large percentage of coaches now that think the way I do. Not a majority. You never want to be a part of the majority. Whether Twain say, if you find yourself uh, in the majority, it's time to reflect. Like there's something wrong, probably. The majority is seldom right. So this type of training, which I call feed the cats is not for everyone but I think everybody should hear it and think about it and I'm proud of that title um, I'm going to talk a lot about dosage but I love the word algorithm uh, and it looks complex and everything my talk is anything but complex though I'm a, a simple thinker we're just going to try to stay fast and we want to try, try to stay fast in track and field and in football We want to prepare specifically for identified game conditions. You've got to be good at what you're trying to be good at. And I'm going to talk from an energy system perspective here some. High school football, the average play, 5.6 seconds, give or take two. A running play may last three. A pass play may last seven. You got about 31 seconds to rest between plays. Okay, already. How about the 30 minutes of stadium stairs? Stupid. Don't do it. Oh, it is aerobic. It is aerobic. I just don't think you need it. You're only going to do 60 offensive plays and like five of them are punts. If you play every offensive play, you play about five minutes of football. Three hour practices already seem like over processed to me. Too much processing. I know I'm offending some of you. But this, these are just my ideas. You say, well, how about hurry up? This is kind of interesting stats. Missouri ran a play every 17 seconds this year. Whew. Baylor, I, I love hurry up. Uh, I actually put it in my sophomore team this year for the last five games. And, and we just went crazy when we did. Uh, and just a couple little things. Uh, my linemen were never told to block downfield. They're supposed to block for like three seconds and they just... Loiter. <laughs> if, 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 if we're going to throw to the right, my receivers on the left did a Randy Moss. They just went. No, didn't do anything, you know. While the other team, because they do all those, what they call those drills, where all 11 guys through the ball, you know, everybody takes the right angle. Pursuit drills, pursuit drills. They are pursuing. To one side and then pursuing to the other, pursuing to the other. Well, my guys are like, all right, what's the next one? All right, let's go. I love it. NFL. Their plays last a little bit less. Average time between plays a little bit more. The games are forever. The total football played is 11 minutes. That's why I watch Red Zone. 11 minutes of football in an NFL game. They have more replays than they do actual plays. 75 minutes a game are showing grown men loitering on the field. <laughs> <laughs> on camera. <laughs> now, why am I showing you this? It's, 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 I think it's amusing. But I think this should go into our process ideas. It should go, it sh we should at least think about it. Lactate workouts, well, maybe if you run back a kickoff and somebody held and they kicked you again and you ran back again, maybe that lactate workout came into some, I just, the only reason you should do a lactate workout in football, I think, is probably if you're just sadistic. You know, you just love to see that lactate war zone fetal position with your players. I don't, I don't think you need it. Now, there, I have read some stuff about hormonal this, hormonal that. Anytime people start talking about hormones, you know, I, I wonder if they really know what they're talking about. Unless it's Caldeets. Now, if it's Caldeets, uh, I would write it down. But there's a lot of people talk about hormones and things. Uh, oh, gee, this, this is a slide I should have taken out. <laughs> there is no continuous play in football, but as Cal talked about, it made sense. The more, the bigger your heart, the more aerobically fit you are, the faster you recover. Okay. 
But I don't think you need to run a treadmill. Oh, well, now, now I pissed off everybody. Um, I really question if any of those things right there win football games for you. Right? I just question it. I see stuff like this all the time. This on Twitter Wednesday. Stony Brook. I really don't know what that is. <laughs> I, I, I think they knee guys in the ball. You know what I mean? Uh, Guys, this stuff like that just give football coaches an erection or something. Like, they, get, they get like really, really excited about it. And you know what's really weird too is that there are a large group of high school boys that see that and they love it. Something about testosterone that makes people want to join the Marines, you know, or or, or go through hard, hard workouts. Uh, I think that process or track is all like, or not track, uh, practice in general, is a lot like my supplements I take every day. Uh, I think I take magnesium because I heard Cal say, magnesium, you know, or something. <laughs> and, and, do you say that, Cal? Magnesium? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Moringa Pure was, actually is a hippie on Hate Asbury. I visited San Francisco, told me Moringa, you know, so sometimes, Sometimes we just do stuff because somebody says to do it. And, and I've been taking supplements for 40 years and I have no idea if it helps me. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the way we are in practice sometimes, right? All the stuff we do, I don't know if it works. So right now, I, I, I resign football this year. So I don't coach football anymore, but I still, like most coaches think, you know, they could figure it out. If I was a coach, I'd always have music pre-practice and warm-ups. Always. I would want my kids coming out in football practice having something. I just know that when I sat in high school at my desk for seven hours and thought, and now I gotta go to football practice. It was it was a terrible thing. Now, guys like Brad, you probably love it, right? You love practice? Yeah, see, there, I just did not have, I was a quarterback, all right? I just didn't have that high testosterone. Oh, I did, but not in that way, okay? No part of me ever wanted to go to boot camp. I hated football practice. Love the games. So I would do anything I could to make football practice more fun, more upbeat. In a warm-up, it would be central nervous system based. All speed is based on the nervous system. The strongest guy is never the fastest. The guy that's in the best shape is learning the fastest. It's all nervous system, all of it. Last year, Jimmy Radcliffe spoke right here, same week, TFC3, and he talked about a seven minute warm up. And he demonstrated, he's about 60 or something, and he looked like he could probably run a 4 3 40. He demonstrated. He was very, very energetic and everything. But you've got to have an energetic warm up. At my school, I'll say a lot of bad things about Plainfield North. The warm-up, they're actually trying to get guys tired. They're sneaking in conditioning into the warm-up. Oh yeah, at, at the end of their, whatever they do, they do a wave drill where they, they go like this and everybody has to run this way and then like this, they all have to run this way. They go like this, they have to backpedal, then they have to come up and, and they just get them tired or something. Oh then hit it, oh, you know, oh, gee. I just don't understand any of that. I can't wait to see Dan Victor tomorrow talk about brain-based warm-up. Is it going to be worth it? Yeah. Good. Because, because this is exactly what I think warm-up should be. Brain-based, moving fast. I believe that warm-up should energize you. So get rid of the wave drill. And never do conditioning in warm-ups. Uh, this is something that's new with me. Air, I time 10,000 40s every year. 10,000 for the last 19 years. That's a lot of 40s. And when I see somebody, a guy today at, at speed camp, ran five flat, 490, 
and then he ran 482. I see that all the time. Where the first two are not as fast as the third one. And I said, hey, Nuccio, what does that tell you? He goes, I wasn't ready to sprint on the first one. Correct. So if you're in the 4x1 for me next year, what do you have to make sure you do before you run the 4x1? Sprint. So a part of your warm-up, I think, should be a full-speed sprint. I also think that football coaches, and nobody will do this, well, actually one coach will do it, should actually time their kids once a day. 10-meter fly, maybe start at the goal line, free lap at 5, free lap at 15, run through, time them in a 40, but pick something and time them every day. Coaches won't do it. You know why? Because their kids get slower, and they know it. They get slower. They're slower on Tuesday than they are on, on Monday. They're slower on Wednesday than they are on Tuesday. They're slower. By the time the game comes around, it's two slow teams playing against each other, and one team looks faster than the other. So they say that team's fast. When in reality, they're all slow. They're all slow by Friday night. And if somebody says, no, we're not, I said, do you time them? Nobody times football players. So I was eating breakfast with a Twitter follower of mine in Portland last week. <coughs> Drove out for you. And we were talking, I told him about this. He's actually doing it. While they're doing five tacking stations, he has a station where he times every guy every day. Full speed. You know what else? When you time kids, they never, ever go low effort. They go full speed. You're going to get data throughout the year. And remember, a part of a good warm-up, I think, is preparing to run fast. Oh, football coaches hate minimum effective dose. They, they want, so many of them want to crush athletes. They want to crush them. And this guy probably will brag about this workout to all of his friends later tonight. I don't understand that, but that's what happens. I do not think these types of workouts will make you fast. Matter of fact, this guy the next day will be slow. Guaranteed. Football coach will never know it. Why? Because everybody will be slow on the team because everybody went through the same workout. I, I get disgusted with this. Football coaches think it's the only route to manhood is to play football. It's not. It's not a war. It's a game. Now, most football coaches be thinking of me like this guy here. This, I swear to God, this guy's in my class this year. Um, <laughs> he's sitting like the third row. This guy, it looks just like, anyway. Uh, I really believe that great coaches are never soft. They're all tough people. You probably think that just because my freshman team went home after school on Monday, and then practiced two hours on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then went home after school on Friday, and then played a game on Saturday and kicked ass, that I'm a soft coach. I'm not. If a guy jumps off offside, I will lose my shit. I mean, I will just, he's out of the game, and then I, I told him, you may never play another play for me. <laughs> I mean, I, I, so I'm not soft. I just believe that we need to be very cognizant of being fast and being highly energetic and injury free come game time. I love this book. Basically tells you that everything we do is unnecessary. <laughs> there are very few things that we do are really important. Kind of the Pareto rule, you know, the 20% of our work produces 80% of our results. So why are we doing 100% of the work? And priorities, as a football coach, I'd always say to my uh, offensive line coach, what's your priority today? Well, we're going, to, no, no, no. Priority means one thing. Well, we're going, to, we're going to work on that drop step. I go, stop stepping around. Get a body on a body and make sure we're able to move somebody. Okay, that's what we'll do. I think when you go in with a list of priorities this long, you don't get any of them done. So what you need to do is, like in track practice, what are we trying to do today? I can always tell you there's always like one thing. I'm not trying to do a bunch of different things. Mike Leach is one of my favorites. Um, I read Swing Your Sword, uh, his biography. I love his offensive mind. He is just, he's all air raid stuff. He is absolutely Washington State. He got fired at Texas Tech uh, because he sent uh, a, a, a very famous player into a shed for two hours 
to keep him out of the light because he was concussed. And then, they, but they also did weird things like carrying cinder blocks around, you know, above their head. Um, this on campus it was like they had for a whole week. Um, at Texas Tech, he's in trouble. The offensive line coach making their offensive linemen, if they screw up, hold a 45-pound plate while they put cold water in their face for like five minutes, just spray them. It's almost like waterboarding. Uh, one of the reasons I resigned football this year is because I can't stand punitive stuff in football. Anytime we messed up a play or a fumble, the whole team, get them going! And they had to do up down. <coughs> when kids are playing grab ass on the sideline because you've been going through an offensive segment for 30 minutes, and that's what kids do when they're standing around, they play grab ass. <laughs> get running! I mean get running! And I, don't stop until I tell you to stop. These kids aren't any good in football. Just had to do like 10 minutes of running. Punitive stuff everywhere. Now, yell at them, send them home. I sent kids home. Okay, you just rolled your eyes, go home. But coach, I, I, I come back tomorrow. And maybe you won't ever roll your eyes again when I tell you something. So you can be tough, but I don't think, I think as a coach you want to be kind of like a good mother that didn't have to say anything <coughs> to you, that could give you a look that would make you feel like shit. <coughs> That's the way a good coach should do it. It should not be a fear of physical punishment. Plus, we are educators. I mean, we're educators. We're not like in the wild, wild west, you know? We're educators. By the way, if you want to read the best book ever on American football, this is it. It's a story of how Mummy and his assistant coach, Mike Leach, and how they totally revolutionized the game of football. And it's written by a guy that wrote two award-winning books, Rebel Yell, the Stonewall Jackson book, which is awesome, and Empire of the Summer Moon, about Quanah Parker, who had a white mother, but still was the most fierce Indian chief of all times. Two amazing books. But when, that, when, I saw, when I saw that this same author put out this book here, I was like, whew, and it did not disappoint. The Perfect Pass is amazing. If your play out of practice lasts more than two hours, you're doing something wrong. Too much talking. I love Hinsdale Central's football coach, Coach Hartman. He doesn't let his assistant coaches, uh, they have to coach on the fly. They never stop practice. He wants to run, he wants to run a play every 30 seconds. And that's the way, if you're not doing that, then you're doing too much talking. You're not organized enough. You have too many priorities. Two hour practices will work. I promise you they'll work. Athletes love it. Actually, remember, some meatheads will not like it. They want to practice three and a half hours. But I, I think that you better have some of the other kids too. And especially in today's world where the concussion thing's going on and stuff, we are going to see some schools lose football in the next 10 years. Because bad football teams will stop having kids come out for their team. So I think it's about time for football coaches to start making football more fun. I mean, not fun in a, you know, like party way. I'm talking about two-hour practice. I'll never forgive our football coach. I have two boys go through Plainfield North, and they both would come home from practice incommunicado. They couldn't talk. Three, three and a half hour practice, lots of punishment, lots of abuse. And they'd go up to their room and sleep till 10. Yeah, that, that's, that's not education, guys. You're doing things wrong. I think kids should, should go home with a smile on their face. A little gas left in their tank. Call me crazy. I don't think you can go max speed for three hours. No, you can't. And all football coaches want to go hard, right? But yet, you can't go hard for three practices. If you have a two-hour practice, you're forced to eliminate bullshit from your practice. I love that too. You might actually whittle it down to the essentials. Radcliffe, uh, he, he did not talk about this. Uh, actually, he did talk about this. He talked to me in depth at lunch last year. And I asked him about the Chip Kelly practice plan. I found out it was not Chip Kelly's idea. It was Radcliffe's idea. And this is what they did. Monday was regeneration. Tuesday and Wednesday, they went fast for two hours. 
their off day was Thursday. They could call it no sprint Thursday, no swept Thursday. By the way, 25% of all the teams in the power conferences are doing this now. 25%. Not Oregon, though. They got tired of this, so they brought in that butcher that, oh yeah, the kids were peeing blood, right? Bob killed him. Got suspended. On Friday, they go fast Friday, and it might be just helmets, might be just shoulder pads, teams do it differently, but they sprint on Friday. They do not want the nervous system to crash on Friday when they have to play on Saturday. So they want a wave, where the first wave is Tuesday, Wednesday, and then they let the nervous system get back to normal, and then they go on the second wave, and they play fast on Saturday. By the way, on, uh, well, I think I cover it, uh, a further review of that, remember Chris and I both said three days of sprinting? Okay, they did four. That's all the spring they did, four days a week. Also, the, uh, uh, what Radcliffe told us was that uh, in the weight room, they like to snatch on Friday. I was like, how many? He's like, just a couple. Nothing wakes up the nervous system in the weight room like the snatch. Like I would know, I don't know. Uh, but I trust Radcliffe on that. So they're in the weight room the day before a game. Now, getting back to Plainfield North, this is the program I worked in until recently. They started to evolve. Finally. That they go three hours on Monday, three on Tuesday, three on Wednesday, one hour or one half on Thursday. Then they, uh, they lift when they're dead tired after practice. Those are really good lift sessions, right? It's great to be in the weight room when you can hardly move. They did running either on Saturday or Sunday whenever they did film. They do film and totally, are you fucking kidding me? You're not, you know I mean? It was brutal. That's what they thought football was. And, uh, and then they go out and run because somebody told them that that's how you run out your injuries or something. Is it you run? Or, I don't understand that. Uh, they do punitive conditioning. My son Quinn, the second game of the season his senior year, they lost to Lockport 39 to 28 or something. They thought they should have won, so they were like punching lockers the coaches after the game, cussing the kids. Blah, blah, blah. So they started every, the next week they were playing a new school called Plainfield East, who'd only been in existence for two years, and they'd won one game in two years. So they knew they could just kick the shit out of their team that week. So they started off every practice with 39 sprints. One for every point they gave up in that game. And then they went over and got their ass handed to them by Plainfield East dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. But that, that's what we're up against. Conditioning at the end of every practice. By the way, my freshman teams never conditioned them practice, ever. My coaches would be like, well, we're going to die in the fourth quarter. I said, we're going to be so far ahead at the half, we won't have to worry about the fourth quarter. <laughs> <laughs> and we work. If you want to know why it works, you come to my uh, presentation tomorrow where I talk about feed the cats. It, it's just a, a, a way of uh, a mentality of coaching where you do uh, minimum effective dose and you make it fun and you think if my kid was on my team would he like it think about that <laughs>